welcome and a good afternoon. I've been queuing up on the outside to get into this for the last five years, and I figured I could beat the system. <laughs> uh, so, um, by way of an introduction, I'm Biren Ghosh. I, I, I work in Bollywood, I work for Hollywood, and I'm replacing Colin Wood. So, <laughs> so uh, that's who I am. Uh, Dom says, oh, gosh, gosh, be gosh, stop it. But anyway, that's, he always says that. This session is essentially a celebration. Uh, it's proof that children's media is about the relentless hunt for ideas. And we are here to look at what's next in shaping minds and hearts with new shows, with creativity and money. Uh, it's been said that if you haven't fought alongside dragons, then you haven't lived. Uh, and so I did that for a few years with How to Train Your Dragons, but today I'm with the real thing. So uh, we're going to see uh, all the smoke and fire coming out shortly. Uh, no pressure. Uh, they have 2,000 pounds each. In my part of the world, we measure things in kilograms. Uh, and, and, and for those of you from outside of the UK, you should know that uh, this fund is going to be deployed after each of the pitches. So I have an advice for the pitchers. Remember the four Ps, right? Pitch, 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 and pitch. That's what you're supposed to do. Uh, the speakers, uh, on my extreme right, uh, the one and only Dominic Gardner of Jetpack Distribution, uh, a much-traveled man, uh, one to look out for. He has this tremendous passion for kids' television and a kid-like sense of humor. Um, on his left is Natalie Llewellyn from Jellyfish Pictures, with 20 years of experience. That's 40 years you work day and night, I was told. Uh, and... Um, IP development, TV production, international distribution, uh, character licensing, that's it, right? That's pretty much it. Uh, Michael Shields of Akamon that we were looking for furiously for a few minutes ago. Thank you for being here, Michael. Uh, um, um, he has over 30 years of experience um, and has a great reputation for picking those right shows that makes the big hits in film and television. Um, Deborah Thorpe of uh, Calibec Media, a highly experienced international executive, best known for co-founding ASOS, uh, UK's largest online fashion retail. I love the dress. Um, <laughs> the, uh, and, and, and Steve Wynn from Strawberry Blonde TV. Um, isn't that a Beatles song? Uh, recognized as an award-winning senior media executive, having worked in creating, developing, and pitching primetime network series, managing large production teams, and businesses in our world. A big hand to our producer, Viola Gabrielli, who uh, works with the Warsaw, uh, Warsaw uh, Children's Media Market, and the one and only Debbie McDonald, whose lasso reached all the way to Bangalore to get me here as the host. Uh, yeah, that's called giving me a long rope, which is not a good thing to do from time to time. <laughs> Without further ado, we're going to get into the main act. <laughs> And may I then call upon the first set of pitchers. I'm going to transfer you over to Team Me Time, Katie Simmons and Lot Elwell. Hi, so we're Katie and Lottie, and we're from a company called King Banana TV. And we're the makers of the hit CBB show, Yakadi. We aim to make entertaining shows that can really make a difference to people's lives. So to begin with today, we'd like to make a small difference to your lives and give you all a moment of me time in this no doubt very busy, possibly hungover day. So just a warning, this does involve a little bit of audience participation, but don't worry, it's nothing nasty. So we'd like you all to take a moment to relax with us. Settle into your seats, make yourselves comfortable, finish off any fidgets that you might have. You can close your eyes if you want. Just be with yourself. You may notice others around you and noises, but gently allow yourself to be with this moment. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, Bring your focus inside. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Let every part of your body relax. 
You may notice some tension. Bring your awareness there. Squeeze it tighter and then let it go. Breathe in. Allow the air to flow deep into every part of your body. Breathe out. Enjoy this time of not having to do and just having to be. Just focus on the rolling rhythm of your breath. Breathe in. Breathe out. And now on your next breath in, slowly open your eyes. Don't worry, we haven't put on funny wigs or taken our clothes off or anything. <laughs> so in this busy world we live in, it's not just adults who leave hectic lives full of stimulation. Children do too. And just like us, they need opportunities to take some downtime and to check in with themselves. Age 0 to 6 is a crucial window in which children learn how to respond to stress in their lives. Our series, Me Time, led by our animated character, Kusi, teaches them how to do this in a healthy way. Me Time is a series of mini moments that introduce the idea of self-care and mindfulness to the preschool audience. We're suggesting a series of 70 times three minute bite-sized chunks designed to work at various <laughs> times of the day. There is a body-mind moment to connect the mind and body, a musical moment to promote playful thinking, a check-in moment to help viewers start to understand their emotions, a meditation moment to calm their busy minds, and a story moment to prepare the viewer for restful sleep. The moments are entertaining and engaging with a big shot of fun to ensure me time isn't too worthy and will make sure that it's accessible for everyone. We want to build a brand that can work across TV, apps and toys that becomes the go-to tool for, for help, to help children when they need a little bit of me time. Families can then pick and choose which tools work for them. So, as you can see from the slides, children are suffering from an epidemic of anxiety and depression. 75% of all mental health problems are established by the age of 18. There is a real need for a show like this. We obviously can't solve all children's problems, but we can give them the tools to practice self-care and help them tackle difficult emotions and stress. Then hopefully they can carry these with them throughout their lives. So thank you ever so much for listening. And we're just going to leave you with a little bit of Kusi having a meditation moment in the hope you can take some of the chilled vibe with you for the rest of the day and keep a nice, healthy mind. Hello, Kusi. Hello. Let's take some time to listen to what's inside us. Let's do it all together. Get comfy. Finish off your fidgets. Close your eyes and look inside. Breathe in. Breathe out and blow it away. Breathe in. The cancer clock obviously won't be in it. Obviously, the countdown clock really helped give you a really calm, positive vibe to take through the rest of the day. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you can breathe out and ask questions at the same time uh, while reaching for your wallets, uh, this is your chance. Anyone? Oh, not once. Feedback? Dom, you can start. Yeah, I'll start. Um, I loved Kusi. I, I, I thought oh, look, the design was really sweet. I think the whole mindfulness relaxing issue is a really uh, important, current, and relevant subject matter for the naught to sixes at school today. So it's right on the money, is, and, and I think it's great to see that. Um, so overall, I really like like the project. Um, there are a couple of issues I do have. I think that the format, three minutes. Uh, 
And even though you've got 70 times three minutes, it's still, I did some maths, it might be wrong, but it, it works out as quite a low volume overall for international sales. So you, we, we, we're happy to do Yeah, more. we can make more. Well, I would, <laughs> I, would, I would absolutely, I'd say just double that to 140. <laughs> yeah, great. Um, you know, it, in, in your pitch, it doesn't matter. You yeah. know, shoot for the moon. Uh, and then get the broadcasters to knock you down rather yes. than feel like you you yeah. cut short uh, already. Um, it feels very public service broadcastery as well, which would, from a distribution standpoint, obviously that's great. We work with all the public service broadcasters, <laughs> but it kind of narrows the field, I think, just to them. Um, I don't think it's exclusive to them, but I think just the heart of the pitch yeah. leads more in, in, down that, that route. I think if you wanted to go broader and work across pay TV, you, there'd be some other elements you might want to build into it to make it a bit more sort of commercially astute uh, in the future. Um, Happy to work with you on that. Beer, and do I need to put a number on it now? Or? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Anywhere from zero to 2,000. I mean, I, would, I, I think I'm, I'm being quite careful with my money at the moment, but I definitely would put something in on this. I'd put 500 in. Great. Good okay, that's the way to go. Yeah. All right. Uh, that sets us up nicely for, for other comments. And, you know, I mean, 500, considering they have to do that much more work, is not that, not that much mm. money. So mm. who'd like to jump in? Yeah. Right. Please go for it. Um, I thought it was a really, really strong pitch. So congratulations on that. And I think it's the only pitch that you're probably ever going to have permission to sleep in. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> no, it was very, very good. And I agree with Dom. I think it's a really... Um, relevant topic right now. My kids have been doing children's meditation for many years and I know how important that is and actually how um, it provides them with tools for emotional management that they may not get in other spaces. So um, I think it's got huge potential. Question for you in terms of format. Um, is it all going to be animated or are you going to have live action footage mixed into it as well? I mean, at the moment, we kind of see it with a little bit of live action, but we're happy to go either towards way towards the 100% yeah. animation if, if that works better. Yeah, the moment we see it is largely being led by the animated character QC to show you what to do and that sort of thing um, and go on sort of adventures with him when there's stories, but with a bit of child interaction, live action thrown in. That's how we see it at the moment. But like yeah. Katie says, could go it could still yeah. one way and or another. And in an ideal world, where would you like it to see it positioned? What, where's Dom going to place it? <laughs> I mean, actually, we, we, it, we feel it could work either way. So we, the way we've worked it out, we've kind of worked it so that we feel that they could strip across the day if they were put in a schedule, these moments, but also that they'd work really well on a VOD service because then you can just pick and choose and go to something when you feel you need that particular thing, or if one, one element of it chimes better with you, then you can just use that one. So, and I think it would work really well in terms of an app, kind of yes, complementary programming in that absolutely. sense, that parents yeah. can actually feel absolutely. empowered to kind of give their kids... And, Now's the time, yeah, I really so. need this, let's get something out yeah. and use it. Yeah. Um, well, I don't have any short-form content on my development slate, so I'm very happy to make an offer. Um, you went in high, though, didn't you? <laughs> um, <laughs> You're not high enough. Oh, you got 2,000. <laughs> um, I'll put 600 on the table. That's the way to go. OK. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Michael, that sets you up really well. Okay. Um, <clears throat> You're going I, in the right direction. Does this work? <laughs> yes. Can you give me OK? Yeah. Um, I love this project. Thank you. Um, and what I love about it is how audience-focused it is. Um, it's difficult in a pitch to give the raw data about what children really experience in the world right now because it, it's a bit of a downer. But that we, as a team, uh, have watched a fantastic series of dead TED Talks by a lady called Nadine Burke Harris talking about adverse childhood experiences and yeah. the incredibly long reach that they have on people's life outcomes. Yeah. And also, I know from personal experience uh, how life-altering mindfulness and meditation yeah. is. And I, so I think this is fantastic, actually. Okay. I wouldn't have thought that this was a terrestrial broadcast proposition as much as an app and, and an interactive on-demand proposition. And the final thing I'd say is, we, actually, we had some early stage conversations with Headspace, some of you may know the wonderful yeah, app, uh, to see if we could find a way of using Bing. And we just didn't solve the creative problem. And I think you've solved some of the creative problems. So I'm going to bid a thousand pounds. Yay! Thank you, Michael. Nice. Um, we, we are almost out of time. So if you just want to put a number and give the comments <laughs> later on. 
At least well, can you tell us feedback uh, later? Yes, We'd love to I'll hear it. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to qualify my offer just very, very briefly by saying we're quite far down the line developing something in this space, but I actually see there could be a really great synergy um, between us and you on that. Um, and so I'm going to bid £1,200. Wow. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. you. Is this how it's going to work every time? <laughs> <laughs> We'll start with you the next time around. Unbelievable! But do you have the fear of missing out? You can do this now. I, I thought it was a great pitch. I think it's, it's really well put together. I'd like Thank to see you. more live action and animation, but that's only because of my space where I come from. Um, and if we can be involved in doing that, because I suspect I've got more experience down the line than doing... But um, in terms of... How does this work? Why do I just go higher now? Yes, it can yeah. go higher. But what? There's only one way to go. We could partner. We could we do partner. do the live action and we could do the animation. I'll match that bid, but put an extra pound on, that, which makes it £1,201. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a big hand. <laughs> Thank Good. you very much. Thank you very much. Well done. In the interest of time, we're going to get the uh, second group to pitch uh, on stage, and uh, may I please welcome Bit Buddies, and I think the pitch is going to be from Henning, so it's over to you, and uh, your time, your time starts <coughs> now. So, hey everybody, I'm Henning Markwas, I'm from Germany, from Movietel, I'm a writing creative producer, and I'm here to present our new sitcom Bit Buddies, live, uh, live action mixed with an uh, animation for kids age 8 to 12. Uh, and you, just imagine, you know Fortnite, right? <laughs> yeah, you heard about that. It's a small app. Yeah. Uh, imagine dinner's ready. Now imagine getting your kid from the middle of a game to the dinner table. Right? Or getting him or her to talk about something different than his or her best friend from the game. As if that best friend was real. Well, in our sitcom, these best friends are real. And they are here. They are bit buddies. In our story world, Bit Buddies first appeared in 2014. Right now, 2.7% of all kids aged 7 to 14 have a Bit Buddy, boys and girls alike. That means in the UK, we have 60 to 75,000 Bit Buddies on the streets, just as real as you and me. They stay with their kid hosts, and these kids are like Leia. Leia is 11 years old, and she's a creative mind. She stays at a Grandma Lola's electronics workshop, invents crazy machines and even crazier tall tales. Her dad is always on the road as a traveling salesman, so sometimes she feels really lonely. Her best friend, Davesh, is a true brainiac. He skipped two grades and he does everything by the book because that helps him balance esports and coding with a sick tradition even if that sometimes seems to confine him a little bit. They spend their evenings, uh, their afternoons together, inventing, coding, and keep in check of their best friends because they aren't normal or human, they are bit buddies. Leah's bit buddy is Lord Hack, rough, rugged rainbow axe, an orc slayer from the medieval Minecraft-style kingdom of Krasaria. But beneath this 16-bit armor lies a sensitive soul and when Leia feels alone, Lord Hack turns to Lord Hug. And the Orc Slayer becomes a father figure. Davesh's bit buddy is Oki Doki, a mini goblin from a Korean cell phone dance app. With his pure party power, Oki Doki dances disciplined Davesh's daily dull routine away. And all of those rules that confine him. That's his philosophy of the three F. Fun, feasting and fought him. <laughs> these, bit buddy, these bit buddies turn analog every day virtually whack. And Leia and Davesh team up with Grandma Lola and girl gang leader Beryl to face this daily culture clash. And to face the ASAP, the Agency for the Safety of Analog People, who wants to create a world without bit buddies. And to face KKW Senior, the software tycoon, who wants to crack the bit buddy code. Our target audience are kids aged 8 to 12, and they sure have a limited screen time. There's 2.5 million gamers worldwide, 250 million Fortnite subscribers, and in Germany alone, 34 million gamers. Uh, and by the way, 
43% of them are female, so this is for boys and girls. We want to reach this audience where it actually is. And BitBuddies offers a lot of transmedia opportunities into this huge gaming universe, Twitch, Let's Plays, you name it. But first of all, uh, we want to reach their hearts. In April, I presented this project in the fifth grade, and there was a, a girl in front, 11 years old, and I said, imagine a world where your best video game friend is real. And she did like, Wah! And then all the kids started creating their own Bit Buddies. So with Bit Buddies, we can join our kids in their world at eye level. We can create stories they are passionate about. Because Bit Buddies is full of fast-paced, freaky fun, but it's also full of emotion. Because at the core, it's not about gaming. It's about truly universal themes. Finding your place in life. Growing up in the digital age. And of course, friendship across all borders. Because it doesn't matter if they're analog or digital or virtual or just whack. These friends are real friends. Thanks. Great done. Well, great timing. Great timing, and now we'll come to the uh, the analog panel, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, and we'll start with you because oh, well, you don't want to hold it against you that you have a W. Uh, I love the concept. Um, getting my kids away from gaming at, at dinner and lunch times is an absolute nightmare. <laughs> and hearing about the fact that the orchids do um, yoga and stuff and mindfulness is is mind blowing. Because uh, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't even I couldn't even start to get them to do that. Uh, I. Uh, I'm a bit confused with the concept. I'm a bit confused, sort of, is it... Obviously, there's a bit of live action in there, there's animation. And I think that, for the 8 to 12s, could be... That could skew quite young. Um, and I worry about that a little bit, even with the gaming, that, that that would have to look absolutely authentic and have the kind of graphics and stuff that they're used to watching on um, Fortnite, rather than something that perhaps is a bit younger than that. Um, it's, not my, it's not my realm, it's not my sphere. So um, I love it, and I love the concept. I'd like to hear a little bit more about it, because we've only got five minutes. Uh, but for now, I'm going to pass on it, only because it's, it, that sort of live action meets animation and scripted world is not something we've necessarily gone down the path of before. Right. But I love, I love the concept. Anyone Thanks. with money can speak next. Money for this concept. No, oh, come on. Anyone wants to add to what he said? Just in two minutes, in a minute. I'm Any very other much with you. I thought it was uh, an interesting pitch and an interesting concept, but it's not, it's not our area at Kalabek, and so it's not for us. All right. I th I, it's a very charming pitch, and I, I think the huge problem is that that age range are obsessed with unbelievably high budget offerings in the mm. Marvel Universe mm. and beyond, and I'd love to know a lot more about <coughs> the writing behind the concept rather than the potential reach of the concept. And I also thought that the design, you could do work on the design to make the characters all come from the same tummy. They all seemed to be slightly diverse in terms of their worlds and their universes. Um, and it's, it's not really what we do, but it was a very nice pitch. Thank mm, you. No yeah. well, thanks. I mean, um, jellyfish do have experience of doing the live action animation hybrid. We've done that very successfully with flugels. I think trying to do a similar genre for that demo uh, convincingly, like when you say the expectations of quality and delivery are so high from that very critical audience, it's going to be tough, um, especially when they're interacting with humans and not objects or inanimate objects. Um, and for that reason, I'm, I'd, I'd pass. But con congratulations, great pitch. I saw it yesterday too, and it was just as good. Uh, I'd like you to prove us all wrong, because I think if you do, you're going to have something that's going to be hugely valuable because I think the audience you're going after is like the holy grail. You mentioned Fortnite. I mean, it is just so big, but that kind of scares me a little bit because we're going into a world that is so dominated right now by Fortnite and maybe we can tag Pokemon on there. To start from scratch and compete with these enormous global brands is, is a really big uh, undertaking. And, I, and it, my experience of going from TV building something about TV to game is a really sort of tough, tough market, something original. You know, even when you've got a very successful game, it's very hard to create TV off the back of it. 
um, but the other way around is almost you know, nigh on Im impossible. Um, but like I said, if you do achieve the impossible, you're onto something amazing. Cool. Okay. Oh, well, I'll try. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If, uh, if anyone was wondering uh, why that lovely music track played in the background towards the end, it shows the 30 second timer to finish. And both the first pictures have not had to be stopped. So we'll keep rolling forward. And I'd like to now call upon Serena to go up and do the, uh, the pitch for the amazing adventures of Aya and Pete. Uh, yeah. Your time starts now. All right, thank you. Thank you everyone for uh, the opportunity to be here and thank you to our judges. Uh, my name is Serena Minot and I am the writer and creator of The Amazing Adventures of Aya and Pete. This is, a, an, we're looking to create an animated series that is adapted from our line of children's books that are focused on travel. This is a, uh, we have two books currently in publication and we have our third forthcoming by the end of the year and we are looking to, uh, as I said, adapt it into an animated series. The Amazing Adventures of Aya and Pete tells the stories of a little girl named Aya who travels the world with her parents and her stuffed sloth, Pete. I and Pete enjoy adventures in exciting cities such as London, Paris, New York, Tokyo, Cape Town, where they meet relatives and new friends along the way. In every episode, we explore travel-related themes such as language, food, geography, landmarks, and culture, such as the songs and games that children play in different countries. As we've all experienced, in every destination, Aya and Pete encounter new challenges and situations that they must navigate, right? We've all been there before. And at the end of every episode, Aya collects a souvenir that is unique to the destination. Let's take a look at our characters. We have here Aya. She is an adorable six-year-old. She is smart, confident, and fearless, a natural leader. She is always dressed in her signature striped tunic, and she never leaves home without her best buddy, Pete. Next, let's look at our uh, sidekick, Aya's lovable, adorable sloth, Pete. We like to say that he is the world's only fast-moving sloth. Pete is, uh, he brings a humorous element to the show. He is witty and funny, and he uh, speaks only to Aya. He's also cautious and pragmatic, sometimes the voice of reason, and he loves the thrill of traveling with Aya, so when he gets excited, he can get quite uh, cheeky and sometimes a little mischievous. These are just some uh, turns of Aya and Pete. And we have other characters. Of course, there is Mummy, which travels with uh, Aya and Pete. She is a roving businesswoman, hence the travels, a loving mom. She finds it hard to resist her daughter. And we never see the parents' face. We never see their, pay their faces of either Mummy or Papa. Uh, Papa is a loving dad, highly engaged and involved. He is a work-from-home entrepreneur. And of course, there are all the other characters we meet while we are traveling, right? So other children that we meet at parks and playgrounds, uh, relatives that we visit in other cities, and the people that we encounter in different towns. So bakers and booksellers, shopkeepers, drivers and conductors. Let's have a look at Aya's world. Of course, this is a travel-based series, so we visit places like in Paris, the Jardin de Luxembourg. If you're from London, you might recognize Big Ben. Uh, Piccadilly Circus, and of course places like uh, you know the Eiffel Tower in Paris, if you're in Cairo, perhaps the Pyramids, in Sydney, the Opera House. Some sample stories that we're looking at, uh, for example, in London, Aya is working on a classroom project. She has a camera, she's taking pictures and correct, uh, collecting memorabilia from around town that she'll ultimately use to uh, present for her class project, but she runs afoul of British etiquette at Buckingham Palace. Thankfully, Pete is there to steer her in the right direction so she doesn't get in trouble. In New York, someone gets lost. This book is not published yet, so I can't say who, but someone gets lost and we have a mystery of backtracking through New York City to find the lost toy. In every episode, as I said, we do explore themes of geography, language, arts and culture, games and songs, uh, but at the core of this series is the things that we learn, the intangibles from traveling, right? Empathy and compassion, understanding of differences, and also appreciation of other cultures. 
I and Pete, we envision to be an animated 2D animation series with 3D imagery. The format would be seven minutes with each city featured across three episodes. This will also help to manage the cost and reuse assets. It is for a preschool audience, three to six, and these are some of the themes that we uh, encounter in the series, representation, travel, and of course, it's a highly merchandisable property. We envision it across books, ebooks, flashcards, workbooks, cross collaborations with established brands for luggage, eyewear, airlines, airports, and of course, digital assets, educational apps, AR and VR pop-up experiences. Thank you so much for your time today. Hey. That's a, that's a fantastic picture. I'm going to connect you to my friend that uh, runs the air miles for Star Alliance, and maybe th that, <laughs> that would, would be, be a great wonderful. Way. I see INP activity packs on the airplane. Perfect. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start right in, in the middle with Michael, and then we'll move to your left and right. Okay, thank you, Sridhar. I thought it was a delightful pitch, and uh, it's a lovely project. Um, I only have, I know, the fact that it comes from books and that there's a, an inbuilt narrative. It, for me, is actually the most important thing. And I think for this audience, stories literally are equipment. Um, I only have one real creative question about it, which is, is the blend of aspiration and relatability. So mm. it's fantastic that we're taking kids around the world. They're rather highly accomplished parents. Is, what can you tell us about the fact that Aya, when she meets a dramatic moment, is really being challenged in a relatable way rather than a tremendously upscale way that ordinary children won't relate to? That's my, that's my real question. Right, great question. Uh, the idea is that even when we are traveling, I like to say that anywhere that there are children, children can go. So the idea is no matter where you are in the world, your children encounter the same problems, right? So at the playground, it might be something as simple as a language barrier and figuring out how to share a particular toy that are things that we would encounter even at home. Yep. And so some of the challenges that they may encounter are things that you know, children would encounter even in their home environment. It's just a question of adapting to these new places. Cool. Uh, okay. We can all relate to having lost a toy somewhere and having to figure out where we lost it. And this could happen whether you're at home here in Sheffield or if you're you know, living in uh, Bangalore. Thank you. I'll open the bidding by putting a 500 pounds onto this. Thank there you. We go. Any other comments or bids from anyone on the stage? Um, I have a question. So in, in your mind, what is the balance between this being, you know, a, a travel-related series for kids so that they can, they can travel with you on the show and perhaps you've got a sort of... Kids can input from where they've been versus the kind of themes of empathy and acceptance and learning about new cultures. Is there a balance between those two? Yes, yeah, so we do envision there being a balance there. Uh, the traveling obviously creates the landscape of the, the visuals would bring you to these places. And to some extent, uh, as part of the narrative, they would explore <clears throat> the landmarks and the foods just kind of naturally as you go to eat. You have to certainly you know, feed yourself. Uh, and the lesson that's learned, the takeaway from the situational issue that arises is where we learn the, you know, whether it's meeting new friends, uh, cultural understanding. So that's kind of the, the underlying lesson that's taught as we kind of navigate whatever the challenges of the particular episode. So it would be a blend and a balance there. Okay, I think it's a really nice idea. I agree with Michael, you know, that you, you, you have set very aspirational characters there, um, but, but I think it's really interesting and I'm gonna bid 600 pounds. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Rob, you put your hand up, so. Yeah, I, um, I really like it, I like the the graphic design for the for Aya and and Pete, I think they really stand out. They feel fresh. Um, although there's a traditional look to the design, I think this the that they're quite a unique pairing. I think a sloth. That's the first time I think I've seen a sloth as a sidekick. Um, <laughs> I'd like to see a bit more of, of Pete. I know he's a sloth. He probably doesn't do much, but I'd be interested to see what he can do. We have a video that didn't have time. To oh play. well, he's probably too slow, right? Um, <laughs> um, I have a couple of concerns. One that, that, and this is fairly fundamental, but I think you can maybe address this, is travel. It's quite a, there's a lot of shows out there at the moment that involve travel as the key theme. So I think you can maybe broaden it for TV to be more about discovery rather than just travel. So you can still discover cultures, but does she have to actually go to places? Is it all about the Eiffel Tower? Which I think, you know, a lot of broadcasters have already got that show, so we might be limited. And the second thing is not seeing uh, mom and dad's face. I'm not sure about that. I'm going to have to, 
sleep on that like a sloth and think about is that the right thing to do? Should we really see parents? Because I think kids sometimes find those things a bit weird when they can't see things because they expect to see it. So yeah, that, that's something else for development question mark. Sure, great feedback. Uh, I will note that I do have the books with me, but okay. you do see the mom and dad, but kind of in profile or from the back or from right. the legs, but you don't actually yeah. ever see their faces. Um, uh, so with that in mind, I'll, I'll bid uh, a thousand. Great, thank you. Ooh. Okay, in the interest of time, you can, you can meet I'm the other I'm going to count a bit, and okay. I'm going to bid uh, 1,200. Ooh. This is wonderful. This is what it's all about. Okay. So maybe there's a secret bid for you afterwards, after the show as well. But we are out of time now. We have only okay. three minutes for question and answers. Great comments. Thank you, so Thank you very much. Well yes. We're going to move straight into the next pitch, and that comes from Team Command and Control. So one more time with feeling. This is Rachel. <laughs> Thank you. So, thank you for the opportunity to pitch today. I'm here to tell you about a project called Command and Control. Our audience is young people between 11 and 18. Um, we have developed a story because, panel, we have a problem. And the problem is a code red. This is an excerpt, this is a screenshot from a trailer that I'm going to show you in a minute. On the, sc on the screen it says, have you seen this? It's streaming all across the school. What were you thinking? Head teacher to Lana, age 15. If you look at the image, you'll see the head teacher is holding up a phone and she's also looking at a screen in her office. And on the screen, Lana, age 15, is doing something. But what? What's happening here and what the problem, the code red problem is, is data exfiltration. And what I can tell you about that is data exfiltration is a word that the intelligence services use for what we call hacking. It's the process of having your data taken from a device of yours, be it a computer, a tablet, or a mobile phone, and having it diverted and sent to other places without your permission, having it streamed, having it shared, and having it publicly broadcast without your permission. I mentioned the data, the intelligence services at this point because I should also introduce myself, but I'm a writer, director, and producer. I work on stories about robotics, artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, and I happen to work with, amongst other people, the intelligence services, bizarrely. <laughs> um, we have developed a story which is very, very, very relevant because we know it is from research that's been done by universities who've been a partner to us in this research and by the intelligence services for young people aged 11 to 18. Why should we care? We should care because the National Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Children did research in 2016. And what they found was that, um, in a very, very large report, what they found was that in the last five years, counselling about online bullying has increased to 88%. I'm going to skip the video and just show you some slides. We have so much data on why this is a relevant issue to young people. It's a relevant issue to young people because more and more young people are living online digital, digitally led uh, lives and because they're watching media and sharing media um, through their digital devices. And at the birth, we're, we're kind of at the cusp of this point where digital media and digital mobile media becomes the way that we share our lives. But we're also at a point where we don't know yet what to do when it goes wrong. Not the young people don't know and the parents don't know. And so what we do know, the statistics are all here, they tell us that when we talk, we talk about cyberbullying in these slides, but actually what we mean is hacking. That's the word that NSPCC used for hacking. We know that children as young as seven are affected, and one in three young people are being affected by this issue. So what are we going to do about it? We have conceived of a story. Lana, age 15, not living in, in the poshest part of town, has a lot of reasons why she needs to get out of there and get her family out of there. Connor, 16, different school, a lot of issues in his life too one opportunity for both of them to get out of there through a contest. So, what we- Players be warned, this won't be easy. I'm gonna win this for us. T minus seven. One wrong move, 
I would have no choice. T minus six. We see our two young characters engage in a contest that can possibly get them out of their lives. Um, we have developed a story about these two young people, two lives, a lot of secrets, and a lot of mobile data exfiltration going on. Um, I'm going to show you at this point, uh, because I don't want to run out of time, a one minute trailer of the film. And before I show it in the tradition of all stories related to the intelligence services, I'd like to say in her, on Her Majesty's service. I told you no wrong moves. T minus one. Stop messing me around. No, you don't hang up on me. It's streaming all across the school. What were you thinking? Day mom. It's like I'm being followed. It's like they know everything I do. And I can't say anything. They're in your service, do you understand? They're watching every person using the app. They see everything. We call the app. Shut it down. That will destroy us. Every text, every picture. This is called threat. I'm happy to go first and just say I think it's a really, really important topic that you're covering and it's fantastic. Um, but that's not we do what we do, and so I'm I'm going to step back. I'm I out. understand. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone? I, I think there's um, there's a fairly increasing market for. I mean, I missed the damn one question. Actually, was it a film or a series? We're pitching for a series, a twelve-part series, a pilot, with it followed up by a twelve-part, forty-five-minute episode series. Okay. Um, I think this this space and this target age group is increasingly important and has been ignored for such a long time. So I think these stories need to be told. I think the platforms are slowly, um, but the, the, what they're growing. There's, you know, the BBC on their iPlayer, they're now looking for, um, you know, uh, not necessarily kids shows as such, but for this kind of older teen. So uh, I think there's potential within this. I think the whole, um, government kind of secret service bit kind of weirds me out in one way but i think it's quite interesting in another that mm. both them and the nspcc get behind it so I, i'm gonna i'm gonna um i'll put 500 uh, on down on this thank you yeah. great wonderful so thank you very much for that and uh, as you see there's going to be a increased appetite with new formats and new genres and we'll have to increase the panel to the 11 and 18 group next time. So mm. we're going to go there as well. Thank you. Uh, last but not the least, we have uh, the fabulous presentation from Sabina. This is the Team Pogo, Pogo Cat. On you go. Sabrina and I'm from Pogo Animation and today I would like to share with all of you the project that we're currently working on so I present to you Pogo Cat. Enjoy! Let's dive into pocket size paradise and have fun with Pogo and he learns to be nice with trees and the kids they all live together in a cottage which is owned by the fairy godmother with Pogo Cat your days are never great you're always welcome to join us Let's meet the kids! Pogo! Pogo! It's Pogo! It's Pogo Cat! Cute, candy, smarty, friends, sporty, grip, and a silly blue cat! Pogo! Pogo! It's Pogo! It's Pogo Cat! Let's start the adventure and grow hearts together! Hope you guys like the song. So that is Pogo Cat. An entertaining and heartwarming 39 times 7 minutes made for kids 4 to 6 years old. The concept of our Pogo Cat is really simple. First, we have naughty little Pogo here, along with his friends who are very different from each other. Together, they learn that, lear that doing the right things will make your heart grow with the help of 
of their fairy godmother, Fairy G. Although they're so different from each other, but trust me, they will always work things out and everything will be all right. Uh, perhaps with some problems here and there? Whoa, all right, a lot more going on with these kids around, so let's meet them. On the land of pocket-sized paradise, an island so tiny that it could fit a child's pocket, there is a tree cottage owned by a fairy godmother. And in that, three, in that tree cottage lived... Oh, it's Pogo, our mischievous and our mischievous little blue cat who loves to fill boring moments with fun, laughter, and excitement. What a joy to be around. He's also super po super creative. However, his creativity tends to be the reason why chaos happens. But don't worry, he will always find his way to solve all the mishap he has caused. Next, we have little baby Grip, which is also Pogo's best friend. This little robot tends to lag sometimes. However, he's very positive most of the time. Next, we have our beautiful Candy the Cloud. A, a cutie on the outside, but a hurricane on the inside. And next, we have our genius Bren. He can bring, he can bring wonders to life through his inventions. And finally, we have our hip-hop trotting cool fairy godmother, Fairy G. She loves to rap. And she's also, she's also responsible to make the kids' heart grow at the end of every episode. So how does one episode of Pogo Cat actually works? Let me tell you. <laughs> so so it's, it's, it's the annual race on Pocket Size Paradise, and all the kids are all warmed up and pumped for it. The first obstacle is... Wall climb, and Pogo is afraid of heights. At one point, Bren attempts to save Pogo from falling, but in the end, he got stuck on his un uncontrollable jetpack, thanks to Pogo, and instead of helping him out, Pogo went off to the next obstacle, hoping that he could win the race. And in the next obstacle, again, he created another mess for Grip and Candy, and he snuck off to the final obstacle. And in the final obstacle is where Pogo really got tested because he's all alone. Luckily for him, his friends still came by and helped him out, even after all the selfish things he has done. Pogo learned his lesson and apologized to them. Together, they crossed the finishing line and Fairy G awarded them with heart growth. We have lots of other uh, other fun fun stories to tell y'all, but I don't think I have the time. So let's move on. <laughs> yeah, oh no, I'm laughing. Okay. <laughs> so what we hope to achieve from Pogo Cat is for the kids to build social responsibility. We also hope to inspire them so that they would think it's okay it's to not be perfect as long as you are a good person. So we're looking for all of you. Our budget is 2.1 million for 39 times seven minutes. So please contact me if you're interested. Thank you. Hey. That's a really competitive pitch. I think I'll make a bid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, no, I think uh, jury first. Please yes. tell me you're one of the voices. Yeah. <laughs> Please tell me you're one of the voices, because you know I am out. <laughs> the budget goes high. Pitch. The budget will go up from 2.1 million, but you yeah, know, yeah. Two, you, you were nervous before you came out. I don't know why, because that was an amazing pitch. I thought, I think it looked yeah. amazing. You presented yeah. that just so perfectly. So that was an amazing, amazing job. So well yeah. done. I haven't, I haven't got 2.1 million here. <laughs> Tom probably has, right? I thought, I thought it was brilliant, but there's the other people in this panel that do a better job than we could taking it on. But I, I, don't, I don't understand why you need anyone. It's all there. And that, and that reel was just, I just thought it was beautiful. It was just really well done. I thought the, 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 the quality of the animation, but also the song itself, the characters are really well developed out. It's great. Yeah, here, here. Yeah. Anyone wants to be cooler than the grandma there? Uh, yeah, go next. Yeah. Oh, I thought your energy was absolutely infectious, and I, you're as, you're as super cute as Pogo is. <laughs> um, um, I mean, from our point of view, you guys, are, you've got that animation covered, so you don't really need jellyfish to help you in that sense. Um, but congratulations on a really, really good pitch, and it's a great show, and I hope you have lots of success with it because you deserve it. <laughs> I, I just I agree with Steve. I think it's a fantastic pitch and surprising pitch actually. <laughs> and also you managed to get so much information, so much data, 
Um, I wouldn't bet against you at all uh, getting this off the ground and making it a huge success. It's not really our genre. It's not the sort of thing that we'd participate in, but I loved it, so thank you very much. Um, I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was an amazing pitch. We met at the drinks last night, and I was really, really hoping it would be good, and it is. Um, and I agree with the panel. I think you're going to get there on your own, but I, I also feel you know, you've, you've come all this way to present this and pitch it to us. Um, so I'm going to bid £500, and if we can be helpful to you, we will. Well, since everybody else has only got positive things to say, that obviously means that everybody in the world is going to be positive about this project, which means it's going to be an easy sell. I think there's, you know, I, the, the clarity of the character, the strength, the, the identifiable blue cat, I think, is really, really strong. And I can see that has been quite an, an emblem and an, and an easy sort of thing to market. Um, I, there, we, we have also met early and we, I've given comments over, so I, I really like this project. So um, I'm going to increase the bid to 750. <laughs> there you go. Okay, John. Any last comeback? Should we go like a thousand between us? Do it together? Yeah, absolutely. Let's do that. Okay. Okay, here we go. Many of you in this room uh, have had <coughs> the occasion to pitch or be pitched to, and uh, every year we come here and we just see a greater variety, a greater quality. Can I just conclude by saying that it's not an easy thing to do in public, but uh, this is a real show with real judges and real money and real presenters, and uh, it's live on uh, TV everywhere in the world, I'm told, today, right now. <laughs> uh, so uh, a big hand for the judges and their generosity. Can you please turn around pictures and give them a big hand as well for a fantastic effort? Yeah, there you go. And uh, a big hand to, to Viola and Debbie who are gonna walk down the red carpet with me when we get awarded for this. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, put your money where your mouth is. Come back next year. <laughs>